showdown is the biggest pump. It's the focal point for UK Bongra. So where were we? Imperial took the trophy home in 2015 in emphatic style. Let's go to 2016. We were the team to beat. Everyone would probably think that we'd done so well the year before. The pressure came was actually just putting out a set which was to follow the one that had just gone. At Imperial, we're a relatively small uni and it's always really tough to put together a team of 16 who you think can be competitive. Putting that set together, it was myself, Manny and Hameem. So I was co-captain with Lal and Hameem. I had no idea how competitive Birmingham and Imperial had been. Like I knew they always came in the top three from previous experiences, but I never really knew and until I started speaking to you know some of my seniors. Once you're you know competing against them, that's when you really sort of appreciate that yeah the rivalry is real. I think the added pressure was also because we that was the first time we were performing in Birmingham. That was the first time the show went to Birmingham as well. So we were thinking, oh, this is going to be such a different experience. Uh, the crowd is going to be completely different. Or maybe they'll be hostile or it'll be very partisan Birmingham. And I think it gave us a bit more hunger going into it. The team that they knew that, you know, we were going to Birmingham. Lots of great teams there. There's maybe going to be more people from Manchester, Birmingham, not coming. So less probably of our own friends and family could make it. So it just made it a bit more of a spectacle for us. But yeah, definitely more pressure. I was fully confident. I feel like Aaron experienced what I experienced with Hash. Speaking about it all the time, linking up, telephone conversations. There was a lot I picked up, so I felt like he picked up as well at that time. I was very confident with Aaron going in in 2016. I thought that he would bring back the trophy that year. Going into captaining, being the main captain of UOB, probably the biggest pressures ever. Like, so Deepak looking over you, Hash looking over you, Rami, Krish as well. It was kind of overwhelming. I have to do something good. There's no fucking help. And if I do, I've literally fucked up the whole UOV's like legacy, if you will. I'm so lucky that I had Suki beside me. I'm not gonna lie. Because I didn't even need to teach him. For some reason, he has a very good Bangada brain. My name is Suki Dillon. I danced for UOB between 2015 and 2017. We got each other in terms of Bangla. Bardo was there as well, and we were just having jokes, like us three were like really good friends. I'm Hardy, aka Hardo. I danced from 2014. I think my last comp was 2018. Obviously me, Aaron Bullen, Suki. As a trio, we were solid, man. 2015 was the first year I got into the team. The whole experience for me was, was a good one. It was a positive one overall. We had good fun. The practices were good fun. The whole team vibe was good. We learned a lot as well. Obviously disappointing in the end. It felt as though there was always that heavy hand in previous years. In 2016, we were left alone. We were like kids, you know, on their own in the classroom, so sort of do what you have to do. I think that helped a lot. We didn't go in giving ourselves a mad structure or limits and saying, oh, we have to do this and we have to do that. We thought, let's just smash it. Let's just do what we want. It was my sort of time to learn then from a, a captain perspective. Obviously, Aaron Buller, loads of knowledge. Suki helped a lot with choreo, so for me, I was learning a lot. We'd had an incomplete team up until January, then I wasn't dancing for a period of a month in between December and January, got injured. So we had all these setbacks as well in that year. I was so confident. The dancers we had was probably the strongest team since 2014. Like 2014 was a strong, strong team. But 2016, I feel like we were all like young guns. We had so much energy. We, we just wanted to win, especially the year after the year before. We were so hungry. I was so confident with the set. I thought we'd win easily. Comp day 2016. It's showtime. this our set's good our dance so good we're ready when i saw it on the night yes, 
It really like it. I love that set. The set was flawless. Seven minutes in, 30 seconds to go, I was feeling the energy, the crowd, the noise, the atmosphere, things were feeling good. What could possibly go wrong? Done the set, we, we smashed that ending, gone all out. We we're picking up our equipment at the end. I remember just looking right towards the other side of the stage and seeing Sergeant holding his bug in, in his arm. And I thought nothing of it. Maybe it's taken off, maybe, I, I don't know. I didn't think about it. Went backstage and I'm quite hyped up and you know, speak to everyone. Like, oh, that was great, how'd you do? I just remember someone coming to me saying, Sergeant's bug came off. I couldn't process it. I was like, so what do you mean it came off? He goes, in the ending, Sergeant's bug came off. I didn't, I didn't realise on stage after that, I just saw Sergeant like crying. So I heard about it after the performance. So basically after you perform, they take you around the back. There's lots of different dancers. There's teams talking. As seconds ticked by backstage and we saw him there, that we were like, fuck, okay, something's happened here. And they're talking about who's likely to take the throne. Yeah, who's likely to win? You know, as soon as I saw it, like someone had recorded it on the phone and I was like... He got realised, we don't know at which point it came off, how it came off, did he take it off, did it fall off, we have no idea. But we know it's a big thing. Don't remember the crowd reaction, I was just silent. I was just like, like, I was just like, fuck's sake. Time goes on and we start hearing from other people, messages saying, oh, smashed it guys, well done. Ch fellas, well, came off at the end. And then we thought, fuck, okay. This could be, this could be serious now. Very, very unfortunate. Honestly, you know, you feel really bad and empathetic and sorry for what happened. But when you're in the moment, you want to win, right? Maybe they won't take as many points off for that, or we we were still like head and shoulders above the rest. I had a good feeling that we might just sneak it because the rest of the performance, I knew that ours was pretty good. And I hadn't watched Birmingham's performance, but I just kind of knew from what people were saying that the bug had fallen off and we're not sure how many points will get deducted. So everyone was kind of in the blue really, but you had an inkling. It happened at the end of the routine, right? Near the end of the routine. And that doesn't help from a judging point of view because it's a lasting impact. And it's the only thing that you, know, that you think about. I deducted a point off for the bug situation. Can't deny it. It's, it's part of the rubric. It's not my personal feelings, it's part of the rubric. He may not have wanted to kick it, but it just looks like it. And I saw it back on video. I agree with the judges by taking points off for that. That's actually quite bad. It was a bit of a shock that Imperial won. It was open. Even the Imperial lads were slightly shocked at that point. Uh, went into the judges room. I remember Suki was there. Buller was there. And it was a bit of silence. We were obviously you know, a bit down deflated at that point. I think it was Ram, and we sort of said, look, I'll speak first, how did we win? Because even we didn't have Imperial winning. As the first question I asked was, if the bug didn't fall off, who's winning the competition? Like, regardless, okay, it's whatever's happened has happened, but answer me that. Deepak asked the best question to all the judges, and he said, 
if that didn't happen, would it have affected the players since? I just remember Deepak nudging me saying, yo, ask them. Regardless, if the bug thing didn't happen, would we have won? That was the question in the judges' room. And we thought, okay, that's a great question. Well, we'll find out that perhaps we would have won if that didn't happen. And we asked. And I said to Deepak, I was like, me personally, it would have affected me. Imperial still would have won based on what I've judged here. And based on the rubric as well, which I think people need to understand, we do follow the rubric. And they said, no, you still would have placed second or perhaps even lower. And then they said, oh, regardless of the bug coming off. They were staunch on that. Regardless of it coming off, UOB weren't going to win. That's when we turned around and thought, that's it, we're done. We'll just leave that. That's done. No point. Whether the bug situation happened or not, they thought a performance isn't good enough. It is what it is. And that's what really pissed me off. Like, that really wound me up. It's just like, gee, like, again, like judging. Like, what are you guys watching here? Did you agree with that, though? No, of course we didn't agree with that. No, we didn't agree with that at all. We still think they got it wrong. I mean, no disrespect to of course. We genuinely think ours is better. But they said because of the bug, we lost. Then I can't really argue with it. I mean, fair enough, that's your situation. If that leaves a bad taste in your mouth after our set, then, then so be it. I can live with that. But when they say, regardless of that, you still no one is like, oh, I'm not sure about that. I disagree with that completely. Even to uh, set-wise, we had them, we had Imperial all over. And I think it was more scapegoat the bug incident. UOB set was, like you said, quite powerful and eye-catching. And in a similar way that I'd said that a lot of the teams had quite powerful bits, quite exciting bits, but in probably that mentality of chasing something very exciting, very impactful, as kind of the Imperial set was last year, there was there were bits where they fell down on execution. I think we 100% should have won. Like, yeah, Imperial are known for cleanliness, but we were very, very clean and there were more moments in our set that actually stood out. Yeah, it was clean, fine. It was clean, but we were at a point where cleanliness is not the game now. Like we weren't unclean, you know what I mean? We weren't not clean. They were just a little bit cleaner than us. We lost on that, like, I don't know. If you know TBS and you know TBS judges, and now it's, it's throughout all competition, is that you will get rated highly for doing exciting things but just as highly as you'll be rated for doing them. If you even fall down on execution a little bit, you'll be punished harder. It was, it was kind of bullshit. I feel like they were just like reaching for an excuse just to be like, oh, it's just not the bug. It's like this, well, they were just reaching. The other teams had amazing dancers and they had that potential to really uh, push the limits. And in doing so, I think maybe just overstretched and the few mistakes probably cost them. Obviously, you need to be clean, but this is not the be all and end all. Like maybe in 2012, 2013, we've evolved from just having guys in just completely straight lines that aren't trying anything fancy. Whereas for us, we maybe didn't have, for various circumstances, that ability to really push ourselves to do something different. We went a little bit in the other direction and went for execution. And, you know, it paid off this instance. It, it may not have paid off in another year, but it, it happened to work this year, so. I might be coming across biased or whatever. I probably am. But to me, like, 2016 should have been a UOB win. But for me, between 2011 and 2016, there was only one year that UOB didn't deserve to win the thing. And that year, the Imperial 100% deserved to win it. And there's no argument. And it made it a bit sweeter, obviously, first show in Birmingham as well, doing it at an away day, if you like. <laughs> doing it there, so that was nice. And losing to them, to any other team, even Kings, man, I would have been like, all right, whatever, do it, it's all right. But Imperial, losing to them was the worst thing ever, ever. And I still think about it to this day, that loss. It's, it's, it's kind of crazy, like Deepak said to me, he was like, you're not getting over this. I'm not having, bro. It's, it's, it was kind of crazy. And I think the set still, I mean, I, yeah, it was, we should have won that. Oh, that's that's uh, yeah. We we missed out there. It was just a bug incident, hundred percent. And I don't want to, I don't want to like slate Sergeant, but he did lose it for us, hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, I can understand why they say that. You know, looking back at that performance, it was amazing. I think UOB definitely worked hard throughout the whole thing, and I'll be honest, you know. When we compare it segment to segment, I think they beat us in SOPs. You know, I can understand why they say it. 
I, I think if the bug hadn't fallen off, I think they might have just won and probably rightly so. For me personally, it's about the whole performance. Their second half, I didn't really find that engaging. So yeah, for me, I think we deserved it. It's so hard for me to say. I don't really feel aggrieved that, uh, you know, if some people want to think that that's the only reason we won, but fine, that, that's, up, that's up to them if they think that. Uh, it, it doesn't make any difference to me. Let's see that team last match. There we go, there we go. Alright, so uh, how's the prep leading up to the comp? Pretty good. Yeah, yeah. it's been good. Um, Intense. Obviously, pressures. They obviously a bit nervous. How many pressures is this year? Um, oh, how many? Oh, yeah, about seven pressures. Okay, okay. Yeah, but everyone's, everyone's feeling good, everyone's confident. Uh, What's the aim today? Wins. Yes. Yeah. Obviously, that's the, win, yeah, yeah. that's the boy. Who's the competition? Who's the competition? I mean, <laughs> I mean, everyone knows from last year. Going from last year, obviously, it's Kings Aston yeah. that we're trying to like compete for. You never know. I think top three is going to be us, Leicester, Aston. So we're looking to go and do our best. They can do hopefully the best that they can as well. We want all other teams to perform to their best and bring what they've got. And we'll just focus on ourselves for now and put our own what we've been working hard on. It's the most impressive thing that everyone can be in such pain for three, four months, and yet we still come out and perform the day. Every team that counts for, so yeah, really amazing. And for us, COVID hit the team two weeks before comp. Unfortunately, nine of us actually got COVID. Um, so it's tough. Had to move rehearsals on to Zoom, do the best that we could. But in the last week, we pushed. So we sort of made up for that time and we're ready now. But yeah, it's been a difficult journey. A lot of us with personal struggles, uni struggles. But yeah, I'm proud to be here now. Difficult, obviously, that we've had a year out as well with no TBS, no Bonga, dance at all since, you know, TBS 20. So having lots of fresh faces is a, a challenge in, in its own. But yeah, it's really great to have you know, a new a new era of, uh, of Bonga now. How's Simba been? Who's in this? 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 Who's in TV yeah. Um, well, we'll be on Monday. <laughs> who's that? Who's that? It's beans. Beans. Bit of shine, bit of shine. Green, sugar, green. Very nice. Bit of green. Green. Green's the best one, yeah. The hoop. Green, isn't it? Yours. No, it's not. Green. By Jordy. Lots of people. Yeah, yellow is nice. Yellow is actually very. Four colors. Lovely. Lovely. The explanation is basically Punjab. Punjab is obviously very important to all of us because yeah. that's where the dance form comes from. So we've got this over here, got the Punjab map. Okay, we've got the four colours that we're dancing in tonight. Obviously the blue, the red, the yellow, the green, and it's all on the cards, playing cards seems to be our theme. The kings, kings, uh, of course. We're here for the win. I think we're ready now. I'm confident in the team. I think they've worked so hard. And, and this final run through will show now, hopefully, to everyone. What are your guys' thoughts from the 2012 Leicester team? I have no clue. I was, I was not around there. So. so it ended up in Leicester being banned from TVS for five years. Yeah. Thoughts on that? Yeah. Um, no comment. No comment. No comment. <laughs> Thank you.
So yeah, my name's Neil Danda. Started dancing in 2009-10. University affiliation would be Leicester University and professional team GCC. The TBS 2012 journey with Leicester. What a journey this was. Now, so first and foremost, uh, I was legit. <laughs> Just to kind of set the scene. So we were obviously a team GCC. We That was really our team. We just used Leicester as a platform for us to compete because there was no platform for competition. Okay, so the way that team then came came about basically was we had obviously our core members, which are all originally from Leicester Uni. So that was myself, Guy called Dav, Sarah, and VJ Sani. We were all from Leicester Uni, and it was an all male set. Everyone else was doing co-ed because that was the thing. Even then, Prince was dancing on our team. As is well documented, that team wasn't solely a University of Leicester team. It had people from Aston University, be that Suvi. It had people from Warwick University, Nick. Uh, you had people that don't go to university, Rav. <laughs> I mean, even our singer, Raf Sapira, who obviously is quite renowned nowadays. He um, he was at college at the time. He was a college kid. And we randomly picked him up and brought him along. There was two guys from Canada who were studying in Leicester at the time. We thought, okay, awesome, guys coming over. Maybe we can get him to run the showdown team for us. So he came across and he was like, why don't we do a live set? There's no, no way that it says you can't do a live set. And he was like, cool, but to do a live set, you need eight strong dancers. And we were like, hey, we've got strong dancers. They're not all from Leicester Uni though, but let's just do it. They, they come from competition winning teams, back to back competitions, that kind of stuff, right? So they're not just here for a laugh. I mean, you have to understand that Bangada wasn't really rated in the UK at that time. As much as Showdown had been running for so many years. Even at 2012, there was a lot of that tag team Bangada. You have your dancers on stage, they'd go to the side, some new dancers come on. And dancers, while performing, would go off and another one would take their place. Like, like you know, that's what was happening then. They'd go to the side, you can't, I mean, you can go to the side and have a water break, you do a two minute performance over across the eight minutes. It doesn't really, that's not in my eyes competing, that's not in my eyes or any of our eyes, proper Bhangra. Right, everything was based around gimmicks. You wouldn't have Bhangra judges, you'd have celebrities coming to judge Bhangra. Right? Like, I've got nothing against celebrities and artists, but if you don't know Bhangra, you don't know Bhangra. Just because you listen to Bhangra music or you perform Punjabi music doesn't mean you know Bhangra. And even the execution at that time was very, very poor in our opinion, like what we've viewed Bhangra as was totally different to what that was. And yes, we'd been doing it with GCC, but Showdown was and still is the biggest comp out there. I mean, the crowd you get, Hammersmith Apollo, it's the focal point for UK Bhangra. Yeah, I was asked and, you know, Dunda was asked and we were like, well, yeah, because we agree with you. You put the cheating and the fake IDs aside. The fact is that all, all those sets were just not enjoyable to watch. And those same people that were doing those sets then and now have evolved and their knowledge is more now, they'll probably look back at those sets and laugh at them because they'll be like, I can't believe we made that. That's why the full goal was, was to go there and show what UK Bhangra can do. That, that Bhangra that people are going to watch and everyone's watching it is, is good enough. We just didn't think that's what Bhangra should be. So the thought process became that we just want to go to this competition to show people what Bhangra is. And the thing is, people will always turn and say it wasn't a university at Leicester team, but before 2012. The way it was back then, if you had Imperial, if you had Euro B, for example, they were essentially like independent teams, right? We saw the people that were on those teams, you know, they were our peers in this general competitive scene. We weren't looking at it like, this is a uni team, right? The guys from Imperial, when it was Ram and, and those guys, they were their own team, right? It wasn't for us that's Imperial or this is UOB. This is just guys who want to do it well and we're up against them, right? So fun fact, I don't know if I should say this, the first all-male showdown set, I think we did it in 2008. Even then, Prince was dancing on our team then because we, and, and he was never at Leicester Uni. 2012, there's a build up to that. 2012 was just because it was a live set and, and, and because we won, right? 2012 was the first time where it was like, crap, they're doing it and they're winning. And I think that's where the, the massive uproar happened. So we had the fake IDs 
that everyone knows about those. So we, we had those done from a chap in Leicester. You, you might know him, Satvin uh, Dillon. <laughs> I think what really got everyone on edge about who was performing was the night before the competition. Sai Buni decided it'd be a good idea to put a promo video out with everyone's faces, their names. So, I mean, it takes two seconds for you to put someone's name in Facebook and find out, oh, wait, he goes to this university. No, he goes to this university. So, yeah, that was exactly the smartest idea. You just go onto their Facebook and it'd be written right there, studying economics at Warwick Uni. And then, then they're in the Leicester promo. You, you're like, what's happening here? Time is now. now, now. On everything. Took my heart away from money. I ain't interested in fame. And I pray that never change. Ambition is priceless. It's something that's in your veins. And I put that on my name. video was was showing a culture that we believed in bunch of lads there was bottles in that video you know also whatever stupid shit we were doing back in the days you know we showed that as part of our promo because that's who we were right and i feel like nowadays everything's very trim and proper and and, 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 and you, it's all about winning and and all that sort of stuff the night before the competition the organizers called us and said we have reason to believe you've got x and x performing for you tomorrow who don't go to university. Please provide emails from your University of Leicester account to confirm that you're Leicester University students. Now, we were like, crap, what do we do? <laughs> so I remember in the build-up to the competition, actually, that I had to phone Prince, and that was when the you know, rumours were starting to surface about the ID cards and all this stuff. And so I remember having a chat with Prince and he was saying to me, oh look, no, I am an Aston student. I'm doing part-time, this, that and the other. I didn't believe a word of it. The way that at TBS you had to prove that you went to that uni was giving a student ID for the comp. So they'd normally submit it pre-comp and have to show it on the day. The University of Leicester email addresses are such that your, it's your initials with a number at le.ac.uk. So all you had to do was find out, okay, we need this initial, who do we know? So we'd be ringing around trying to find out who's got the same initials, can we get them to email off? And then all we did was offer Blackberry, changed the email signatures to be their names as you can. And obviously we had the, the initials there. So we sent those off thinking, yeah, job's done. Turned up the next day at the competition, captain got pulled aside. These email addresses don't match up with the university directory. I have no idea how they found this out. TBS day, six hours before the competition, they didn't even know if these guys danced. Their status as university students at Leicester was pending, but they still, they still basically let them dance. So it's just, it was, it was crazy. Oh, I fucking loved it. <laughs> I thought it was brilliant. I kept hearing rumours on the day that um, Leicester going to do a live set and I was thinking, no, they ain't going to do anything like that, but they did. And it was brilliant. There was a lot of people on the uni scene that hated Leicester. It was, it was hostile, yeah. I mean, we turned up, first they said about the email address and they said, look, we're not sure if we can allow you to perform. He came back and it was up to the other competing captains to then decide if we would let them to perform. It happened two or three times during the day. I think the first time they came back with, we we're happy to let them perform, but they won't be able to place or there'll be reductive points or something like that. And then we weren't happy with that. We said, fine, we're leaving. And then they said, no, no, you can perform and you can place. So then we went on, performed 
And then post-performance, there, there was a, a bit of a backtracking saying, we're not sure if we're going to let you play. So some of the other captains have disputed it again. So we actually got changed. And that was the main reason for us to get changed. Going on stage without your Varti when all the other teams are, a lot of people saw it as a big sign of disrespect, like to the teams, to the organisers, to, to Bhangra in general. Like, you can't go on stage just wearing snapbacks and, and like hoodies. You look like, they look like thugs. <laughs> it is a family event. Like normally you wouldn't care. If all the teams are changed out there, Varti, like, it's, all right, it's all right. But, you know, you've got, you've got to remember TBS was, these are, uni students, everyone was aged maybe 18 to 21, and they'd call their families to these events. So you'd have parents, grandparents, younger siblings. You know, you could have someone as young as 10, 12 there. So even younger if they needed to be a beat, but at the end of the day, it's a family event. So you, you've got to show some sort of respect. We're back, we're back on stage. We're looking around, everyone's still in their vardia. I'm there, my Hulk jumper, <laughs> jeans, jacket on. And we've got the other idiots with their, their, their slogan jumpers and uh, hoodies on. So we, we looked like, the, we looked the part if you wanted to hate us, basically. <laughs> I don't know, to be fair, I don't know exactly the truth about this being high and all this stuff. I, it's all rumors. I didn't do any drug tests on anyone. That's all I'm saying. So yeah, I don't know what's true or not. Yeah, and then obviously when winners got announced. And then we got announced as obviously the winners. Um, yeah, that was quite the experience. I had, at that point, I was just in total shock, like what is going on? I just remember Vic's face being like, just shocked, like all his team pick him up and he's just like, hands up like this, like we've actually done it, we've actually won. When the audience react and start screaming boo, get off stage. When Lester announced the winners, they were booed. Then you have a couple of idiots in the winning team who react the wrong way. To be fair, at that point, I'm just with the trophy. I couldn't care less to what anyone was saying. There, there's some characters in our team who were a bit more, they, they, they like to play on it. They're like, we've won, so who cares? Like, fingers up to you guys. Well, that was stupid. That, like, that, 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 that's stupid. That's where, that's where a lot of the dynamic changed. Regarding swearing and all that kind of stuff, of course, like, a lot of us don't advocate for that, right? But I can understand where it came from because once again, you know, we were all young and there was a lot of heat because what you have to understand, we're, we're passionate about Bhangra and we've gone there and done probably the first closest to a live set that you, you could see, right? And we win and we get booed. So of course you're going you're, you're gonna to feel like Bhangra is getting booed. They, they, one of them had the SGPD um, uh, hoodie on and on there the actual slogan is keep hating us, you're going to make us famous. Or they're holding that hoodie up to the crowd. I mean, they're taunting the crowd and they're like swearing at them. And I think more of it was the emotion coming out and people show their emotion in different ways. Of course, we don't advocate the way Sahib, Sahib reacted. Of course, that was wrong. But I understand why he reacted that way, because that whole day was, was just a shower of shit. We were very young, we were very boisterous. We didn't give a fuck about anything. I walked on stage doing a jummer when we won, did a heel click and put my little finger up to the crowd. And I loved what they were doing at the end as well. Um, I think it was Cyber in particular. He was just this kind of, how do you call someone like him? I don't want to give him too much props here because he might just get big headed from this. But it was almost like a Nate Diaz moment where it's like, he, he's been an asshole, but it was fucking great. When they were booing, as soon as the booing started, we had attitude then. We were like, we don't care. We just done something. And if you if you like it, if you don't like it, it is what it is. It was like this whole bad boys of Pangra at the time. Like I said, we were young, out of uni. That was the image. Everyone on that team associated with that image. It was cool. If you look at that now, would I act like this now if I was that 10 years later? Of course not. As a fresh out of uni student, you know, who, who is in that Pangra bubble and things, I'm the, I'm the guy and I'm the sickest dancer out there. Again, any other team wouldn't have done that, but I think these are, they did, they just came into the competition like, we don't really, this competition is nothing for us. Like, if we can get IDs, if we can win a comp, who cares? The whole sort of, yeah, it's just mad disrespect, mad. Then it was the day after, I think? Yes. It was announced that, you know- Queen Mary's had won. Yeah. Don't care. <laughs> <laughs> we'd, we'd, uh, this is why I, I still don't understand. Yes, they gave it to Queen Mary's, 
But even then, Queen Mary's, in my personal opinion, weren't better than UOB on the night. It should have been University of Bangor. If anyone else was going to win it, it should have been them. And regardless, it getting announced the day after, we've had the moment with the trophy lifting our stage. They won't be able to ever live that. And to be fair, the trophy was still in Leicester. I think Rav took it and I don't think he ever handed it back. <laughs> it's not a win as such. It will be a win with an asterisk. Yes, Leicester got disqualified which I felt was pretty harsh uh, on them. I think they were a five-year disqualification. I was only there for my Masters, so uh, to be honest, I'd win the trophy and I'd disappear next year. It wouldn't have impacted me, but I did feel quite bad for the, the following five years of University of Leicester students, but that was what was decided upon. I understood what they were trying to do in terms, I think they were frustrated that the scene was a bit too commercial. It was, wasn't what Bhangra really is. And they wanted to showcase what traditional Bhangra is, which you know, I'd always be an advocate for that. The way they went about doing it though, I guess is where the problem is. It could have been like an exhibition act and it wouldn't have then brought the whole competition to sort of disrepute. No, I mean, the, the, the guilt, if you want to talk, talk about it, I mean, uh, you know, people are going to turn around and say, oh yeah, but what about these people that put a lot of effort and, and you know, have their families and friends. And, and, and I appreciate I appreciate that. I'm, I'm not taking that away. For me, there wasn't any guilt. There there was no guilt because I love Bhangra and to me to be able to perform Bhangra to live singing, live tall and goje and all those people that's what they want to do now. Everyone wants to do that now because now you realise that that is what Bhangra is. When you then went onto Facebook and everything afterwards and read the comments everyone was saying that's not Bhangra, that wasn't entertaining, how can that win? That's not Bhangra. Well they didn't dance to any songs that we know, there was no mix there. Right, there was nothing entertaining, there's no gimmicks there, that's not Bhangra. And we were thinking, that is Bhangra. That is the moment that changed, for me anyways, UK Bhangra industry. 100%, and, in, and this is what I mean with, people were really, you know, upset that we we, we cheated and, and then this is so bad, but I'll be honest, not to be some sort of righteous person, but it's for the greater good. Sometimes you have to do something bad for, was for something that's the greater good right and that's what we felt like we were like well you know we want to put on something that we're passionate about that moment changed the scene like and and as a team again we were the independent team our whole slogan our whole we want to we're going to change the scene that was our whole motivation behind it that was our aim we wanted to change the scene and that's what happened right that there's a huge difference in getting booed while you're doing live to know everyone wants you to do live Right. And I think if we hadn't done that then, then then I think we would have carried on on the gimmick path that everyone was going. From then, live became a thing in the UK. It was never a thing since then. And that's when you had other teams who, by all means, had more knowledge than us, but they never went onto the platform. They never got that interest going. Teams like independent teams who are killing it, bust up and job, right? Everyone looks over to bust up and job as that live team with all the knowledge. In a way, Leicester doing that, breaking the rules, set them up for people to go there and actually learn, right? Otherwise, no one would have probably had an interest. There were all these old school life teams were around, but no one cared. They dropped something which was needed, a, a live set. So yes, people hate on it because they're bringing on people that weren't supposed to be part of the university, but they raised the bar and it got people talking and that's what it's about. And it's fun as well at the same time, so. Listen, I'm, I'm all for it. I'm, all, I'm supporting that team all the way. What happened then needed to happen, and I think it's the right thing that happened because right now, everyone says UK Bhangra is at the top. So, yeah, things happen for a reason. incident is, is is tricky there's so many different viewpoints <laughs> my heart goes out to the guy because he was dancing really really well he was giving it his all you don't wish that on anybody right that's a that's a really difficult situation i was just feeling the energy and the vibes and the, and the passion and i think that for me i wanted to put on the performance and actually i could have been a bit more controlled towards the end uh, but i just let everything go in terms of the dancer who then stepped on it or if you say kicked it in the video, you have to take into some sort of consideration intention. The guy isn't on stage kicking a bug deliberately to disrespect it. Like some people would come up come out with that. 
accusation. I don't. It's clear that that's not the case. Anybody who's been on the stage will know that when anything happens, you you don't have time to react and you don't have time to think. And it's a split second decision of what you do. It was the very end of the set. You have to continue. You're performing at the end of the day. You have to continue dancing, and especially with 30 seconds left in the set. I mean, what do you expect someone to do in that situation? Someone is center middle in the formation. What happens if it happens at the beginning of the set, at the end of the set, do you carry on, do you walk off? There's so many things to consider. It's not easy. I had to make a split second decision. Nobody had talked beforehand. If, if something happens, if you have a malfunction like this, we didn't have a group discussion or a formal discussion. I remember just before thinking, we need to tell people, if your bug comes off, you need to pick it up go off stage. That's what I was told. I remember that advice being given to me from my first competition. I remember before thinking I need to say this and I didn't say it. For whatever reason I forgot I didn't say it. Did he kick it at the time? I thought no he didn't, not at all. When I saw it, so I didn't feel anything. People say I kicked it and this and that. I didn't feel anything at the time. So my initial thought was, oh my god it's come off. Crap. I saw that it was off the stage. It was behind the cones. So I thought, with like 20 seconds left to go, do I stop now? Do I? My split second decision was, you don't stop, because what are you going to do? Because it's already off stage. There's nothing else you can do, really. Finish the set. He had a split second in that moment. I mean, we've reflected on this for a long time. So has everyone else. They've watched the videos. He had a split second where he came off. He's in front of thousands of people. He's knackered after dancing seven minutes. Your thought process isn't the same. Your decision making won't be clean. What would I have done differently? Probably not have tilted my head so much. Because I reckon that last 20 seconds, if I had made a conscious effort, probably could have, could have stayed on, yeah. When your bugs loose, you sort of, you're worried about it, and you end up sort of having a bit of a stiff neck. But obviously it's easy to say now, at the time we didn't expect it to happen. It's something that I think is um, discussed throughout the Pungra scene really as to should I have, have I kicked it was one thing and should I have stopped? Stop, move, either hold it or go off stage with it. I think there would have been a lot of respect for that. A lot of respect because it's the worst nightmare. I remember 2014, I was pulling my bug down. So many options, so many opportunities. Deepak tied my bug on the day and I was pulling it, pulling it, pulling it. It's because we'd had it tied so many hours prior to that and we need to move and it's never as secure on your head as you want it to, especially from my point of view where I tie a bug every day. When it comes to the turban, it's like, you know, it's a crown, like it's something that you wear with pride and it's a representation of a whole history of for, for people. My first competition, I knew that when you step off stage, you have to, have to take the ground. You when your bug is falling off, Go to the side with respect to put it down. Yes, no matter what happens, you, you don't stop, but then there are certain things that are going to lose you a competition. And there are certain things in our culture we do not do. I think that's where possibly as a culture we need to make sure that we don't lose ourselves and we don't lose that foundation that we are. So yes, we're taught to crack on and just finish the set, but I think there would have been a lot more respect for UOB had we handled it in a better way. I've had the privilege of being around people who actually have more understanding about you know the culture part of the competition. I would go down the state of if there is a disrespect to culture then disqualifying a team is correct and some will say that's quite a hard line to take but you've got to remember when you're representing a cultural dance form which represents a culture in which certain aspects of that culture are held in such high regard it's, I think it's a basic prerequisite that people on that team understand that and if something's done against it, I wouldn't say, you know, you're not gonna make that person feel really bad, but a mistake is a mistake and if the judges feel that that mistake needs to be penalised, then that decision needs to be respected. You need to show your respect to the art. It's an art form. Sometimes we lose that part of it, but yeah, I think that the onus is on the, the leaders, the people who are actually teaching the choreo to actually educate the whole team about everything that comes with it. So being a leader, you don't just get them for the win, you have to make them understand that there's more to the art form than just the competition part. And I guess from that, a lot of people would have learnt that if such an occurrence occurs, what is the correct way of handling it? And until this day, I do remember, like, there was some respect shown by, I think it was Tegve, 
who went and picked everything up at the end and showed the respect that needs to be shown. I think that it should have been maybe done as soon as it happened. There should have been an effort to rectify the mistake there and then. Now, everyone's got a fucking opinion. And I'm like, oh yeah, I would have done this. I would have bought the bug. I would have paid my respects and put it aside. No, you fucking wouldn't do shit. Okay, end of the day, when you're in such a situation that you're not prepared, you don't know what you're going to do. And bless Sergeant in that kind of situation, what is he supposed to do? He's inexperienced. I think the backlash that you probably got from that is just not acceptable. I think you had people like say Harvey Norjuani and shout out to him. You know, there's ways of explaining this kind of stuff and what should kind of happen. And I think the way he dressed it for Capital Bungalow, which is a professional competition uh, that was going to come after, he addressed certain things about that and what to do in that kind of situation. So my personal thoughts with that is educate people and just don't be a dick about it. Because at the end of the day, you know, people can carry that forward and it's just going to affect them. The impact that it had, the backlash from it all was something that I just couldn't believe. As a you know, 20, 21 year old to receive sometimes, sometimes threats, actually, like personal threats on my life. It's, it's just from people who've never danced and, you know, I don't even know. The lack of support that I feel that I had from uh, my own university, to be honest. I feel that a lot of people on the team at that point in time, I, I sort of became like a taboo person to you know, hang around with. It was completely different from the vibe going into 2016 when you sort of, you feel like a team, you work together as a team, you know, you, your aim is to win. There's a lot of camaraderie and then the fallout from that was, yeah, we sort of don't want anything to do with you. It had a big impact on why I didn't dance in 2017, because although I auditioned and got into the team, there were so many issues, I think, surrounding my own mentality and comfort with regards to whether to dance or not, essentially. And it was a big decision for me. And I remember having the conversation with Suki over the phone. And so I said, look, I personally, my mindset is I feel like I've been attacked from left, right, centre, from all directions, really, and I haven't had any support in this whatsoever. If I was to dance again, I would just be putting myself through something for the sake of it. I've lost that passion and that enthusiasm. And I felt really sad about that. I think he somewhat understood the situation, but his main focus was to win. And so he felt that if I wasn't in the right mindset, then I don't really have a place in the team. And I remember coming off of that conversation with him and just I just started crying because I was something that I was so passionate about and I loved it at the time when I was there. And it just caused so much pain and distress and I was just couldn't put the two together and I think I had to focus on my own mental health. The backlash from that made me learn a lot about the people around me. The use of the P word, it made me grow as a person. But at the time it's so it, it just feels like it's the end of the world. It's so detrimental to you. But it definitely shapes you and makes you stronger.